There you go. We're all good to go. And um, we will um, go. I have the the agenda in front of me that was uh, sent out to everyone. I have some notes on it that I made from discussions this morning with Al and Peggy and previously with uh, with Mark that uh, we can go over. And I also, there was some discussions that went back and forth uh, earlier with uh, Eileen and I think Joe, per Joe Paradiso had some questions or some things they might wanna get, uh, get out. So uh, all of that uh, falls under the forward planning for architect the archit architectural phase of the product project well, I'm having a little trouble reading this morning or this afternoon we're um uh, you know we've obviously gone beyond the selection processes that we uh that we started out with uh and some of the preliminary work we had to do and um and now uh we have or will have uh, the architect uh and we'll begin working with the architect and and working with a in the design phase so uh, there's a there's a kind of a break at the at the last meeting where we selected and now where uh, we, we move forward with uh, in, in another phase. Um, first of all, um, uh, Jeannie or anyone in the on the on the public, uh, any public comment that um, would like to be presented um, at this point? You could raise your hand, and Jeannie would promote you if you um, if if you so desire. No one at this juncture has raised their hand, but I believe there's another opportunity for public comment towards the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's correct. The next, um, the next uh, item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, and we have the meeting of January 9th, uh, January 18th and January 24th. Um, <clears throat> I, had, I had one comment that the January 9th meeting did not seem to be complete. Uh, but I will take uh, additional comments uh, on on any on one or any of those um, those three uh, minutes that we would uh, be asked to approve. Uh, and you're in my you're you're, my, you're in the upper left on my uh, on my screen. Okay. Um, so on the January 9th minutes, I have a couple of comments um, in item two, the December 12th minutes were approved as amended, not as presented. And are you, are you, are you, are you, are you taking, will you take this and, and make the, uh, make the adjustments? Is this, is I this am, I'm taking the minutes fairly contemporaneously. So I will have that reflected in today's minutes. Okay. Okay. Um, next um, item four, um, the, the architect firms are not listed. And more to add? Yeah. Um, and then after item seven, um, we had a moment of silence for Noreen. And then uh, we need a time that we adjourned. Yeah, I think that a lot of this, because there should be a motion and who motioned and who seconded. So maybe we don't approve the ninth and try to go back to the recording on that. Does that make sense? That was oh, yeah, my, uh, that was my, uh, my feeling also. Um, and, um, uh, again, I'm somewhat new to this, but even in item three, discuss the architect RFP bid results and evaluation forms. Uh, to would it be up to us, or it, would it be um, necessary to include those forms as an attachment to this? I'll, I'll see to Al or Joan or or some or or maybe Mark. What what is the common way that we handle that? So that would be the blank forms. Well, that would be the, um, the my question would would be what for oh, the bid results and, yep. the, and the bid results and our evaluation of them. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I don't think, uh, Joe, you would need to uh, include those. Um, I, I have reviewed those with the firms that were interviewed. <clears throat> so they they're aware. Um, but I don't know if you need, I mean, if somebody wants to open up a uh, FOI, you know, request, then we could deal with it that way. But 
you know, I don't think you need to put anything out there publicly. I'll have, is, is everyone not in agreement on that? Okay. Um, I, I think maybe the RFP result, you know, anyone who came into the RFP, I don't see why that couldn't be part of the public record, right? So that other people could look at it or no? The actual RFP itself, Joan? No, the the what the what the architect sent back. No, the proposals. Yeah. If, if there, were they on the website when they were, were they made available to the website when um, they were delivered? I thought they were. They're in the town clerk's office. Uh, there were ten of them, correct? Yeah. The, the hard copies in the town clerk. Maybe even just a reference that hard copies are held at the town clerk's office or the whatever. Yeah, I think it would be good to put a reference that they're they're in the town office. I'm not sure if we want to post them on online. Uh, who who's the proposals? Who owns the proposals? Right? Is it the the architects or is it us? Do we have the right to share the proposals with all the other people that put a bid in or a proposal in? So I would I I would just reference it in the uh, that they're stored in town. Requests for proposals are owned by the people who've requested. And since it is a municipality, it would be considered, I think, public information. Correct me if I'm wrong, Al. The only thing that you would need to redact is the financial information that was right. Submitted. Right. I, I think you take out the last page of what they were the actual bid. I think that would be appropriate. Yeah. Well, I'm not talking about the bid, but we asked for some financial uh, data. Uh, oh, financial yeah, yeah, yeah. Firms. That that would would need to come out. Right. Bids were separate. Uh, those were separate uh, documents. Okay. So, do we um, do we want to take a have try to postpone January 9th? Yeah, we I try don't to get it redone gonna... and agree yes. on something a format maybe. Yes, that okay. that was my um. So so the uh, uh, the public comment. I don't I don't recall if there was public comment, but the approval of. Minutes is okay. Three, discuss the architect bids and evaluation forms. I think that's where we would um, we would just leave that as it is. Uh, the the um, four to choose the architectural uh, firms. Uh, we would um, we I believe we have a list of the ten of the ten firms that that uh, replied, and I mm -hmm. believe that's on our website already. Mm -hmm. So a note that that that, that the the uh, that information is available on the website. And their actual proposals are available in hard copy in town clerk's office. I think you said. So. Yes, they're available in the town clerk's office. And Tom Akari is he part of? He's part of your group. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he should he should be with us. Yep. And. Again, set, set the joint meeting date with the Academy of, uh, Advisory Committee. I think that was set. Uh, I think we could list that. Um, that that was uh, the January 18th. And then after that, I think we're, if we get all those in. Okay. Any other additions? The January 24th meeting got, um minutes got quite the conversation going on Facebook. Um, it was section four, the last sentence of the second paragraph, the committee agreed the importance of discussion, discussing additional funding at the next meeting and specifically meeting with the Board of Selectmen and Finance. Um, so the interpretation of that was, and people are very confused about the funding um, they're thinking that if the grants come in, it would reduce the total cost of the project, not what's bonded for the project. So I clarified that. Um, people are saying they're already going to spend over the 15.9 million. And I think what we want to potentially put in there is that we had discussions about the question that was on the referendum and what kind of leeway for future grants might there be. Um, excluding the grant that was the state grant for four million. It's the twenty fourth. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, we have to be very specific about what is budget enhancing versus what is budget supporting. Correct. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we want to. I don't know if we want to go back there, but the meeting today with these uh, with there was a meeting today with Peggy and Al Goldberg, um, uh, the uh, and then um, uh, Mark and Bill Tom Ken and Bill Stable. <clears throat> And uh, we we talked about that in detail, and and again, that's in there. Uh, that would be included in the forward planning when we get to four for the architectural phase of the pro of the project. So, uh, I th I think just a little bit more of the discussion that was had prior to the statement that the a committee agreed. Do you know what I'm saying? A little bit okay. more on that discussion would clarify why we're just. They're saying, you know, out of the gate, they're already asking for more money. And that's not really what we're saying. We're very conscious of the budget. We're not going to go over budget and we're going to very much focus on that. And I, this is, that was what I was, I tried to clamp that down fairly quickly um, in the forum yes. that we are very focused on this. And a lot of the, and the questions re re revolved around what, how and where grants were, were applied. It wasn't right. that you know, we were going to, we're going to get more money. It was just a, well, I mean, if if we got a grant that was a plus, then that was not town money that was coming in. But that's actually that's not the way it turned out today. Uh, looking looking forward, it uh, um, all grants reduce the town the town's expense, uh, and none are uh, none would uh, be accretive to the project. So we may want to have a future discussion that talks about potentially a phase two that CIP, some grant money can go into the capital improvement program as a phase two item. So maybe um, after the opening there, we may be able to have, we can research grants that can then um, maybe add, add into what is currently a base because that, is not excluded, I don't believe. That's um, a great idea, that's, John. That, that's somewhat of a difficult discussion. Um, but let's, again, if we could just put that under uh, what we do what we do in this meeting uh, down, you know, under under item four, because okay. there's a lot, there are other things that go there that, that affect that. Who do you know, where's my coffee? Um, so January 9th, we're not going to we're not going to approve. Um, January 18th appears to be okay. Uh, we can approve that. And January 24th, um, do we want to do we want to make a an insert into the the information on on the 24th, or should we just um, take that for uh, to be to be uh, determined? Sometime later in this, either sometime later or clarified in 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 today's in today's meeting. Um, I think maybe the discussion of how grants will be utilized started the question. I, if you guys don't want to insert it, that's fine. Um, so, so my recollection of that that part of the conversation was that that you know we talked about possibility of there being additional funding, and and the the issue was if it is going to serve to increase the the size of the budget, then we need to know that as early as possible in the process. Mm -hmm. Correct. Not, not not that we thought that any additional funds that we identified would increase the budget. It was important to know early in the process if there were any, if, if anything was going to affect uh, the budget on the plus side, of course, would, would, would be the way we would have expected. But that's not going to be it. Joe, are we talking about the use of the grant funding as we discussed this morning and what can and can't be used for? Yes. Okay. Because that was that, that's that sort of that kind of that discussion on the 24th. Oh, okay. started the the, the uh, sort of posed the question to the meeting we had this morning. Okay, uh, gotcha. Because we have updates since since that meeting um, from Peggy and Al. We have we have updates since then even. 
Well, no, since this morning, uh, oh. or, or since, you know, not since the morning, since the, the, the meeting where you discussed it. Yes, yes. So, um, and, and, I, and I think we can decide when we, you know, when we have that discussion, which is, you know, coming up, yeah. uh, that uh, if we need to insert anything in the minutes on the 24th, then we can just leave the minutes on the 24th alone. Okay. So, um, do I do I need a motion to um, skip uh, or to take the um, or delay the approval of the minutes till after we've discussed other items, or can we just do that? I think Joan was about to answer my question and she kind of disappeared. I don't know if she lost faith in us or <laughs> she, she went to uh, she went to get a cup of coffee or maybe her phone rang. Give her a minute. Sorry about that knock at the door. <laughs> the, the, the question was, can we delay approval of the, the minutes or uh, can we just uh, uh, approve the 18th and 24th now? Um, because they were, they would be approved without, without, uh, without change. I think you you say you want to table the approval of the J J January 9th until the next meeting. Correct. And then you want to say we're going to approve the 18th and the 24th. So yes. I can move to approve yes, the 18th and the 24th. Okay. Second. I'll second. Any any opposed any or any discussion? Opposed? All in favor? Done. All right. Uh, item three, um, and I guess I wasn't aware that we had to do this, but I've been told we do, and maybe Mark, you can tell me that we we approve all of Collier's invoices. Uh, yeah, you're you're going to approve every invoice for this project, Joe. Um, boy, a lot of fun. All fifteen point nine million dollars is going to filter through this committee. So I, you know, I, I really signed up for that. I really that's one of the reasons. <laughs> But to Al's um, laughing, you know, behind his smile there. <laughs> but um, one of the things that Mark um, uh, uh, and I discussed on a, on a call we had earlier, when we were sort of going over what we would be doing here, uh, was to actually set up a finance subcommittee that would review each invoice, uh, all invoices as they came in, um, <laughs> and not wait till the you know not wait to have to review them by the committee at, at the next meeting. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, uh, work on a the, at the committee work on a uh, work off a recommendation from the from the subcommittee, and the subcommittee, my understanding about subcommittees would include would have to include probably as a chair someone from our group, uh, but it can also have uh, other non members not members of of this committee uh, who can uh, who who would be able to. Uh, help. Are you, you, you're nodding your head on that one, Mark? Yeah, you don't want to have enough where there's a quorum, right? You just want to have enough so that usually it's two, no more than three uh, members. So it could be yourself and, and two others or one other, and then maybe um, myself, obviously, Tom, uh, or somebody from the design team. Uh, uh, if we go the construction manager route, you'll have somebody from the CM team. Uh, but what what that committee does is reviews in greater detail before this meeting, the invoices, the pay applications, the change orders, anything that uh, affects the, the, the finances or the budget. Um, you know, usually it happens during the day. So it's best to have people that have some flexibility with their schedules. Um, you know, usually it takes about an hour. Uh, we do it a day or two before this meeting. So if we need to make any changes, we've got some time to do that. But when it gets to this meeting, what happens is you'll have, you know, as part of the agenda, 
you'll have the invoices for approval and the agenda will say, you know, invoices from QAM, Colliers, you know, ABC contractor and any, any other consultants um, previously approved by the subcommittee. So what that allows this committee to do is uh, more streamline the approval process. I mean, you can certainly question anything that you want, uh, but what we've seen uh, work best is uh, the subcommittee reviews it, goes through all the questions, and when the subcommittee says, yep, we reviewed all these invoices, the pay applications, they're, they're good to go. Most building committee member uh, members trust the subcommittee made up by two building committee members, uh, and then they they largely sign off on it. That's what has worked best um, in other municipalities. It's not a heavy lift during design because you're going to have, you know, our invoices, Tom's invoices, you know, you have, you know various consultants. Um, but when you get to construction, there's going to be change orders and contractors invoices that are going to be in the millions of dollars. That's when you're really going to want, you know, a subcommittee to review the, the details of those big, big invoices from the contractor. And Mark, when the invoice, as the invoices are presented, uh, would we get a budget schedule or uh, an updated budget yep. that includes all those in invoices as if they were approved? Yep. Uh, yeah, you'll get a financial status report at every meeting, you know, uh, inclusive of those budgets. Um, yeah, so we, we would we would know what the impact of the of the um, uh, it's too late to do anything about it, but we we would know the import the impact of the on the budget that the invoices had. Sort of yeah, in, well, I mean, in, in theory, the invoices don't really affect the budget because you're you're drawing down from what's contracted within the budget. Um, if you know, if once we get to construction, there's change orders, and that's starting to affect contingencies, and uh, contingency uh, values become you know less and less, then maybe there's a conversation. But um, at, at at this level, it's really just taking what's under contract. And drawing down from the contract and has less of an issue on the budget. And when we when we um, when we talked about this, I thought of you almost immediately. Um, would you uh, would you be willing to be one of the members from our group? Who me? Ann. Oh, Ann. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd oh, be well, delighted. <laughs> You, you, you too, uh, Mark. I, well, I would yeah, like I'm automatically on it. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd love to do that. Um, and do I have a volunteer after that? Uh, I can, Joan. Okay. <laughs> Joan's barely yeah. getting her hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, that, that's a real hand, not a virtual hand. That, uh, that went up. It is a real hand. I'll put it up there. Um, and uh, Mark, you will be yep. on that on that in that group. Now, yep. who else? You, you mentioned a number of other people. We have two two committee members. Yeah, you, you. Um, you know, Tom Tom or somebody from his team would be on it because there's going to be invoices that he's going to need to sign off on. Um, you know, Tom signs off on all the contractors' invoices, so Tom will want to be on it or some representative of QAM. Um, and then if there was somebody else from the town, whether it was uh, Jacqueline or Jeannie or um, uh, a finance, uh, who, I don't know who your business manager is. It's not, is it Stacy? I know she's for the school. Is she here she's for the, the whole director town? of finance? It's a, it's a shared role. Okay. So Stacy would be good too, to be on that uh, uh, role. Stacy, what's it? No Noblitz? No bits. No bits. Mm -hmm. We, how do we approach her uh, through, through um, Mark? Neither one of me? our neither one of our liaisons is here. Besides Jean, who's just kind of taking notes. Um, well, I oh, think Al's here. You want to yeah, approach? I don't Stacey think it's Al? appropriate for me to be, uh, be right. on the finance committee. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not to be on the committee. But Joe, maybe you could reach out to. Do you know Stacy, Joe? No, I don't. But I could. So this might be a good time for me to learn. Yeah, I think you should. And I think it would be helpful for you to reach out. I, I've been communicating with her on cash flow forecasts and, and other things. So 
Um, she knows obviously about the project and the numbers. Uh, and you could ask her if she wants to be on the finance subcommittee. Yeah, Stacy, no she may one designate somebody. No bits. Pardon? Uh, Joe, I'll, I'll send you her information. Okay. So we have um, from the committee, we have Ann and Joan. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mark from Colliers. Uh, we have a QAM rep. If that uh, Tom, is that going to be you for now or will be you? Okay. Cross out QAM rep for Tom. You can send a designation and Stacy. Uh, would that be something that I would uh, also like to attend, Mark? Is that? Or, or, right or, now you have two. You would make three. I don't know what a quorum is. Um, Quorum, quorum is four. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. Okay. But then, yeah, you can be I, on it too, Joe, if you want. I, I, I don't really want to. Oh. <laughs> well, then, then. It doesn't, put, put it this way, it doesn't play to my strength. Yeah. You know, uh, Anne, I think Ann and Joan would be great. And I think that's enough. Okay. You have Anne, to trust Joan us. And... You have to trust us, Joe. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, right. I learned, Good point, Ann. Good point. It, I learned that a long time ago. I mean, I, I didn't, uh, I, I did not, um, I did not spend 90 hours a week at work. I learned to trust uh, trust the uh, the people that that were around me. Okay. Um, so for the for today, uh, we did get the we did uh, there was a copy of the invoices. Um, this looks like it's going to be a monthly invoice. Mark, is this is this yep. going to be a, a flat uh, a flat rate a flat uh, charge every month i don't think uh, it's a flat rate i think uh i think they're very specific to hours yeah we have an hourly with a not to exceed right uh, but it, it will be but it will be the same this will be the same amount more or less the same amount every every month yeah not it won't be the same amount it'll be it'll be different uh, okay do we have a copy of the actual invoice rather or, or is that part of our package i apologize part, it should be part of the package Although I'm looking at the invoices and they're the exact same number for the first two months, which I think is interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's why I was asking. Well, I know that in my experience um, with with several different Collier's contracts, that's how we've handled it. Lump sum? Um, just, you know, take the total and, and split it basically over the perceived um, life of the project. Do you I'll have the invoice while we're in the, around the meeting, and I'll, I'll let you know. Do you have the, the invoices there, Ed? Can you have you looked at them? Yeah, they were they were yeah. in the packet that was distributed. Mm. I apologize, I was focusing on the. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I looked at them. I said, "Yep, they're Collier's invoices." <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, you know what? I think hours... that it is it is a lump sum, ninety six seventy eight per month over the life of the project. Okay. And, so that um, should be easy to review. Is this? Do we need to review this, or can we work act on this now? I think we can act on it now. I don't see any mm -hmm. reason why we shouldn't. I agree. Um, uh, motion to, to accept these accept these two invoices. I'll so move, move it. No, oh. go ahead, Ann. You move. I'll second. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> and I'll second. And uh, any any further discussion? Uh, all um, all in favor? Give me a hand raise. Aye. Done. Aye. So mark that as unanimous. Except mm -hmm. I think we've lost Dave Spurley. We did. Yeah, he he's been gone for a little bit. I'm trying to promote him to panelist, but he's either not accepting or he's there as an attendee. Can he hear us? He can hear us. He can always call me if he's got a. If he call one of us, he can call me if he's got a problem. I guess. So if you're if you're hearing us, Dave, uh, we're not we're not seeing you. Let's see if I. Nope, you have not. Uh, you haven't texted me or called me, so I assume you're you're uh, you're doing okay. Okay, that's done. That's done. That done. That done. Um, the next, uh, the next item uh, in, oh, Dave Sperley. Dave Sperley says I need to be added in. That's, if you can do that, please. 
Uh, excuse me. There you go. Sorry, three. Joe. I just got home from work and I got mm -hmm. out of the car and somehow I got disconnected. So I apologize. Back in. Good, good. Well, you're 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 devoted, Dave. Even you, you've got us in the car, you've got us at home. Yeah, I could um, hear the whole thing. I didn't realize I wasn't on until some you just mentioned it that I wasn't there. So I could hear the whole conversation. Okay, good. Any any comments before we move on? No, I think that's good. You made a, did a good job putting the group together um, to review the invoices, so that's good. Okay, thank you. Um, in the forward planning, uh, let's start with the um, uh, the meeting that we had this morning. The the uh, the what what we when we talked to the group that I mentioned, Peggy, uh, Peggy, Al, Mark, Bill, Tom. Did I leave someone out? I don't. Whatever we. Did I leave someone out? Um, no. No, nope, that's it. everyone. Okay. Um, the um, one of the things that we looked for when we when the meet in the meeting uh, th that we discussed earlier that was on the uh, I believe uh, our last meeting uh, was that we wanted some um, definitive idea what the what was going to happen to the budget. We needed we couldn't we couldn't really take a um, well, you know, we'll, if you need it, you'll get it later, or we'll act later on this. Uh, and what we got today was wasn't necessarily uh, what we expected because <clears throat> what we got was the 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 budget is the budget. Uh, any um, grants that we get, including the four million dollars from the state, will reduce the amount of um, the bonding, uh, and that also includes any future grants. Uh, while the um, building is in uh, the building phase, or the building is in progress. As long as they, if they specifically uh, are connected to something that's uh, in the current scope of the building, uh, if there is if there is something that is beyond what the what the scope of the building current scope is, uh, a grant could be applied against that. I don't know if I got a definitive answer, but uh, I. I believe that was the what was my takeaway. And Al's nodding his head. And Mark, you're nodding yeah. your head. Yeah. What might be an example of something outside scope that could be added? Just Let's curious. say you wanted to redo the fields. Okay. Uh, so, or um, you know, uh, additional pedestrian stuff outside. That yeah. Could, you know, yeah. let's say you wanted to convert the roof into a uh, a landscape or a garden terrace or something. You know things that we didn't have, uh, you know, in the original program. What we can't use it for are things that were already identified, i.e., geothermal, ADA compliance, hazmat abatement. You know, the what's what was identified in that referendum. It was it was a really good meeting and really helpful to hear from Alan Peggy as to what can and can't be done. Hey Mark, what about like if Mark, what about if an organization were to donate money to put wood floors in the gym or to better seating in the in the um, um, you know our theater? Does that count? Um, well, the idea for it might because again the the theater if you're talking about the the small theater up front, not the gymnasium, uh, it was never intended to be uh, reconstructed as a you know, a high-end theater, you know, uh, space. It really was just to get a, a refresh, um, you know, refinish, uh, you know, moderate upgrades. If if the town wanted to really spruce that up and make it something more, i.e. more of a performance type theater, I think that does fall under the category of added scope and grant funding and or <clears throat> other funding sources could be used for that. I, I don't know if we really, even in today's meeting, I don't think we really talked about um, donation money as opposed to grant money. I think if you know grant money is the uh, was the was the uh, the line that you know you can't you can't cross. Uh, but donation money, I didn't I didn't hear that that was that was off limits. Maybe we need to get some further uh, clarification on that. Hmm. So. 
say we want somebody to come in and do private public so they want to you know take the kitchen from one level up three notches and they're donating money that's not a reduction to that's not going to that's not going to go against the reduction it, it specific correct me if i'm wrong now it's any grant and we're applying for a grant and things like that but if somebody comes in with a you know five million dollar donation from somewhere um, i think tom used a very good example regarding the kitchen this morning uh tom would you mind repeating what you said this morning about the kitchen so i was just pointing out the kitchen is an example of scope of work that wasn't in the referendum language um in a detailed way so there's lots of different levels of kitchen that you could provide you, you could provide a kitchen that is simple as you know wooden cabinets and a microwave all the way up to a full commercial kitchen so you could make the argument that well if you're going to do if you want to provide a full commercial kitchen that's something that wasn't sort of anticipated in the original um, referendum language and that potentially the town could, you know, with with town approval, the town could contribute more funds to the project because it's something that's outside the original intention scope. Um, that, that, that was brought up, and that's a good point, Tom, that it's not just necessarily grants, that the town has, a, you know, a, a funds uh, in their, in, they have capital funds that they could contribute to the project, uh, to, to, to Academy, if it goes above me on and the kitchen will be a good example of that i think well, potentially I so would a private public for a, a better theater space that is off the gym correct so the, the gym stage if or you want to renovate the gym stage per se versus just the little one in the front mm -hmm. yeah I, th I think what i heard is you know the advisory committee that bill stapleford is chairing um you know he was the one that mentioned the kitchen concept because they're there appears to be a groundswell of support for uh, 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 cooking, teaching, uh, cooking, learning, um, and that's what culinary, led, culinary. Yeah, that's what led uh, Tom to suggest, you know, uh, an augmented, you know, uh, kitchen versus we do have a, a modest kitchen in the budget, i.e., residential appliances, <laughs> but nothing to the level that you would use you know, for a culinary teaching uh, program. And correct me if I'm wrong, the theater was also fairly bare bones as well, correct? Yep. yep. So yep. if there's something that needs to be, we could potentially get the theater community that's around or people who are interested in that do a private donation. So that would add to versus um, yeah. reduce, added scope. reduce yeah. the bond. Yeah, it's added scope and it right. would it wouldn't impact the bonding level. Right. There's also a, you... a line. There's also a line where 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 there's where there's substantial completion. So there is a phase. I think a phase. We would call it a phase two. Uh, that if you can if you can define a phase two with you know a series of improvements, uh, and that was that could be subject to both donations and grants and contributes contributions from the from the town to uh, to to complete a phase two. Uh, a phase two of the of academy. academy. Hey Joe, in this morning's meeting, did you guys go through the wording of the referendum? No, not because it's simply Dave, but 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 Peggy was pretty clear uh, that that you couldn't use it for anything that was already identified in the fifteen point nine million dollars of. That I mentioned geothermal, um, and she said no, that that was already in the referendum. You can't use the grant for that. Because my only comment would be, Mark, is that even those sketches that were put together um, by QA and M, those said thoughts at the top with a big question mark. So those these were just concepts. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't yeah, know about the exact much? language, but like nothing was set in stone, right? Other than these these parameters that were kind of set forward in the in the referendum. But again, I have to go back and read it more closely. Yeah, I guess the same thing. Like the hurt the hurdle we need to get over is what's scoped out cost-wise in the budget, right? And is there any detail to those line items within the budget? Like, what is that line item for kitchen? You know, so that's our, if that's our hurdle, then we, we need to know what's scoped out within that budget. Here's, here's what, um, 
this is what came out of the meeting. Sort of the the the, the because I was I, I tell you the truth, I wasn't happy not having you know a more definitive answer. That this is a uh, somewhat uh, not a um, th there was no I didn't get a, as definite an answer as I wanted. I, I didn't get a positive answer, but it was but I got an answer. It was you know it's it, the uh, all grants that are in this in the scope of the building come come off of the um, the um, the bonding, but the 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 sort of the, the compromise was that we we'd wait we we'd, we'd work on this we we'd take designs. Uh, we'd get some, uh, maybe some budgets, budget, uh, budgetary looks at the designs uh, for over the next three months, and then we would revisit this, uh, this, this at, at three months. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to get an, another answer, but I think we'll have a better idea of where we are in the uh, in, in the process, and you know, and, and we'll get an idea of what we consider to be in scope and what might be out of scope. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll and I'll see to Mark and and Al and Tom if that was your what you you took out of the meeting uh, as the uh, sort of as the final uh, you know the final part of the meeting that we 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 go three months and then take a take a look at this. Yeah, that's exactly. right. I'm looking at the referendum language, Dave. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. I can email it around, but. Uh, it, it it talks about very specifically the program, you know, the flexibility, the youth and family services, beach and rec, geothermal, even photovoltaic is mentioned here, elevator bank, ADA accessibility, um, additional parking. Uh, again, <clears throat> existing fields stay the way they are, as does the playground. So if those change, that falls out of scope. I can, yeah, yeah, so, I can get this around to everybody so you have it. Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of, I like Joe's comment, um, Paradiso's comment. I mean, whatever the backup, whatever software was used to generate those estimates, that wasn't shared with the public. So we'd have to research that to see exactly what was included. I mean, if there weren't upgrades to the gym to were, put wood, there, wood there floors was, in. or There was a sheet that was sent out as an informational sheet. So that's what we probably should have to look at, I would say. Once there was a public um, buildup of the budget, it wasn't as detailed as uh, Bill Stableford gave it, gave it to me. I think I sent it around, but there was one with more detail, but still the, as you said, the spreadsheet that, excuse me, that um, generated that uh, that budget is belongs to Colliers, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, nice. so every dollar there should be should be in there and, and has a, but even that's not a, you know, there's a, there's a buildup behind it, presumably. There's a lot of buildup behind it. Yeah. Again, if you look at this reference and I'll email it around to you all. So you have it. It's, it's pretty detailed. Good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. But what you also keep in mind too, right? We always said that preliminary design. Yeah. Was just, oh, yeah, there's, there's no design in here, Joe. It's literally just what's in the building, right? What the design yeah. looks like is, 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 would be determined. But other than, other than beach and rec and, and family youth and services, the rest was supposed to be up in the air based upon public feedback received from the advisory committee. So, I don't. I, it just it seems it, it's counterintuitive. That's all. It's the scope was not supposed to be con considered yet until we get the advisory committee information back. Other than beach and rec programming. Yet here we're we're planning for scope. So the, I, I just say we take it grant by grant as it comes along and figure it out. Okay. And and um <laughs> instead and, of trying uh, to solve the world, you know, if we're if we're having this conversation, it's it, we're in a good place. Yes. Right? And 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 we'll and we'll um hold off at least uh till we get some idea where the designs are going to be coming in and how they're gonna how they're gonna look against the budget as proposed. But, and and, support the but I think we go after as many grants as possible, no matter what the design comes in at, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. I think this is a... if, if it doesn't help us, it helps the town mm -hmm. uh, because they, the, uh, the- The numbers go down. Yep. The bonding numbers. The, go bond, down, so. the amount of bonding goes down. The cost of bonding goes down. Uh, you know, the, the payment stream goes down, so. I think this is a good moment to ask Tom 
our carry to give us um, his pep talk that we heard this morning about uh, how a $12 million construction budget is not peanuts. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to point out this morning that, yes, obviously we would love to be able to contribute more money, but we haven't even started. We haven't even outlined the scope in a detailed way that estimators could put pricing on. So we don't, we don't even know where we are yet, other than we have $12 million for construction, approximately. Mark will yell at me and tell me the pennies are off. But the, the point is, it's a lot of money. In Rocky Hill, we built 25,000 square feet of new senior center, community center space, brand new for $10 million. Um, you know, the overall scope of this project was to do light renovations in a big chunk of this building. So, you know, we're going to we're going to have some flexibility to do a lot with twelve million dollars. And at the end of the day, we're we're going to make the very best of that twelve million dollars. Um, I highlighted that we need to be you know, we need to be smart and realize that there's a prioritized list of things that absolutely have to be accomplished. The building envelope has to be um, upgraded so that you preserve your asset. That's the roof and the windows. Um, you need to, you know, remove the abatement. You need to upgrade the mechanical systems, put new mechanical systems into the building so it's environmentally sound. Then you need to address accessibility so that going forward down the road, um, we can accomplish anything you want to do within the building. And then we start renovating the spaces, right? For the program, the beach and rack, the youth and family services, the multifunction spaces. And we do as much as we can with $12 million. And I think we'll get pretty far, um, if not all the way there, you know what? But as Mark said, we really need to get through this first phase, identify what the schematic design, what do we want to accomplish, put some numbers on it. And then we use that information as a team, as a committee to start making decisions about, well, what, what might be in and what might be out, or more importantly, what can we change? One example that was discussed were mechanical systems. There are lots of different options for highly efficient mechanical systems that may be able to make cost adjustments to the project. So that's how projects go. And it's your job as a committee to make the decisions that you know guide its final path. And it's our job to give you all the information and make recommendations about you know, which path you should go in to make the very best of the $12 million that you have. Um, I'm really excited about it. I think the project's going to be great. And, um, you know, we're going to squeeze every ounce out of the $12 million. Actually, I was trying to think of ways to cut the OPM's budget so that we could transfer some of that money into a hard cost funds, maybe do a stage or a gym. Um, apparently that got no laugh. So we Mark could, might not be listening. We could, we could <laughs> have, we have, I heard you. We could have Collier sponsor a new stage. We could call it the yeah, Collier there you stage. Go. <laughs> we do nothing but song and dances at Collier. So yeah, that would make sense. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I, I would like to add a cautionary note to that. I'm not, because I can't leave without the cautionary note. We have two points, two data points so far in, in the costs, the, the uh, selection of the OPM and the selection of the architect. Both are approximately, they're, they're between 30 and 35% over budget. Uh, the escalation clause is 17%. So we're already into the, um, uh, you know, the escalation of other items. And if, if we go 30 to 35% across the board, uh, we won't get what Tom, what Tom said. Uh, so we're, um, it, it is a cautionary note that our, our, the two data points we have are not really positive. Well, and, and one thing I'll mention, Joe, and I forget what article and what paper it was in, but there is some recent data of some projects that are being bid for spring um, from some of these towns and they're way over budget. And I forget it was Cromwell maybe in, in some other town recently. 
might have been the Hartford Current. So Farmington um, and uh, Torrington both went back out for additional funds uh, for projects that were over budget. And Farmington's like way over, right? Farmington was way over, as was um, Torrington. They're both, you know, tens of millions of dollars. But I mean, I would point out that I'm sorry to interrupt. It's a bit of a cautionary tale in that you can't compare Farmington and Torrington to your project. These are $150 million projects. There are only a handful of companies in the state that can do it. And it's a different delivery method at $10 million with a, let's say a general contractor delivery method, which we haven't decided upon yet you're going to be in a much more competitive bidding market. So um, I'm not saying that the, the marketplace hasn't experienced significant amount of escalation because it has, but in the same regard, I, I don't think you can compare those data points. Okay, but since you guys were the ones who did the initial concepts and you were part of the project and your bids were 35% over, then why wouldn't we expect that kind of going? Well, that's a good question, but I also <laughs> have to point out that our budget was established based on traditional AE services. Since that time, since the time that we established that preliminary AE services fee, a number of things had changed. In particular, as a part of this RFQ, a lot of additional consulting fees were put into our contract. So that's going to raise our fees and all the other architects' fees um, right out of the gate. Um, a number of things that are traditionally paid directly by the owner um, were put into the architect's fees. So that's going to skew the costs up a little bit. Plus, since the time we did the budgeting, the scope had grown. So geotechnical uh, or geothermal services were added to the budget and the scope. So that affected the architectural services from when the original architectural budget was put in place. So, you know, if you pair those things out, I think you'll find that the architectural fees are a lot closer, you know, alone um, to what the original budgeting was, so. The, okay. the other thing just to add to that um, is the budget was established with a construction starting in 2023. And there was a, so this referendum, don't forget, was last February, March. Mm -hmm. We weren't brought on board until what, what August, uh, uh, September. Um, uh, and here we are just starting design in 2020. So now we're not talking until construction until 2024. So you know, we almost lost uh, another year of escalation um, and the delay of getting this thing moving from when the referendum was passed. But what I'm hearing from Tom is some of the things that might be in another bucket have fallen under the architectural bucket. Is that correct? The subcon some of the sub contractors. Is that is that what you're saying? That's what I was saying, that some okay. some of the, you know, things that are traditionally considered an owner or soft cost expense were put into the architect's bucket, which is fine. That, that happens and it mm -hmm. provides more control, but that has an effect on all of the architectural numbers. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So what bucket were they in if you had no, consulting engineering usually, services? Yeah, okay. usually those would be uh, the owner's soft cost budget. So oh. it's all part of soft costs, but you're just looking at the architectural fees as being 30% over budget, but that's because we've, we've just moved stuff from different line items and it's contributed to an increase in the architectural fees. No, I, I agree with you you're saying, Tom, but what, what line items, not asking you, maybe that's, this is a question from Mark, but what line items were they carried under in the budget then? Yeah, I don't know, Dave. I'm looking at the budget and I don't know which uh, specifically, because we've got hazmat broken out separately, which is different. Um, Tom, I, don't, I, don't think we, I don't think we need to go through this. I mean, I, I think we all, the, the, the agreement out of the meeting this morning, and I think that the consensus would be let's go three months and have this discussion then and and we'll see where we are we we were concerned that everything was going to be over budget so we wanted to look we wanted to get some clarity on the on the um uh, on the um 
the, the additional funds that might be available. Uh, we found out that their additional funds essentially are not available under most circumstances, maybe under some specific circumstances. And we'll get a look in three months and see how Tom, uh, you know, how if, if we're right that, you know, that we can get a lot for that money and see, and we'll see how much, uh, how much we're getting for that money. So I, I, I would like to, if, if we can, move on from here. Any, any further comments on, on um, the planning for the architectural phase? No, I think Ann and I will get into the weeds, I think. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm holding my tongue right now. <laughs> the um, the contract that was sent to everyone. Um, one of the things that uh, we we one of our tenants was that the committee was going to approve that uh, before Peggy actually um, signs it. The board of selectmen were supposed to, or either were supposed to, or will give Peggy the ability to sign it to sign it when appropriate. Is that still Correct, Al? That's correct. At tomorrow morning selectmen's meeting, the selectmen will be asked to vote to approve the contract and authorize Peggy to sign it uh, if and when everybody is uh, comfortable with it. So that vote will take place tomorrow morning. Will they actually, will the Board of Selectmen actually want to look at the contract, read the provisions? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, if, I, I, if this I, I, committee is happy with it and the attorneys are happy with it, I don't think the selectmen can add much value by okay. um, uh, being amateur attorneys. So I, the I, attorneys I, have already reviewed this? Yes, the attorney reviewed it and signed off on it before it even hit the streets in the RFP. And largely what we did, Joan, was we just added the business terms to, um, to the agreement. And it is a quite detailed agreement, much, much uh, more detailed than I guess I would have expected. Um, do, I guess the question I have for the committee is, do we, do we want to take a, um, take the, at least some uh, a time to review the contract and see if there are any, anything that stand out to the committee so that we actually get a committee uh, consensus that this is the, uh, this is the contract that we want, or do we want to leave that to our uh, OPM. Well, if we're looking for a vote tonight, I think it's a pretty, they're pretty dense documents that I'm not sure, has anyone else gotten through the details of them? I, I even I, I have not. I, have I not. just, I have not. I just saw the email come through today. I didn't even open it. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? The changes that are in purple, were those done by the attorney? Uh, or the attorney seen those changes? Yeah, the attorney has seen everything on this document. Okay. Uh, these documents, I should say, plural, because there's right. three of them. Yep. Um, let me just pull them up. So uh, the, the B-102 and the B-201 are the ones that are very specific about uh, the architect services. Um, I'm trying to, yeah, I don't think, uh, Joan, uh, blue versus purple had anything to do with the town versus uh, our our standard edits that we typically have on these. I'm just looking here to see. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if there's, yeah. It's a, it is, it are, it, they are three dense documents. And um, I think if we're going to, if, if this committee is going to approve it, we should take at least 24 hours, if not 48 hours, to allow the committee, all committee members to, to go over it. Does that sound, does that sound reasonable to the committee first? Yeah, you know, let me suggest this, Joe. Um, uh, I think your idea is a good one to give the committee a chance to review it if they wish. <clears throat> and we'll just leave it that, that Peggy won't sign it until she hears from you, Joe, that 
uh, your committee is uh, not in opposition to it. So Al, you could actually still have a motion tomorrow that upon approval of this committee, Peggy can sign and it wouldn't have to go back to the Board of Selectmen again, correct? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Is that okay with you, Joe? Okay with me. I just, I just, I'm committing all, all of the committee members to, to, you know, review 50 pages of, of dense type <laughs> in multiple colors. So I want, I, I'd like a nod from our, from the committee that, you know, that they're, uh, you know, at least some of us would be committed to doing that. Well, we'd have to vote on it too. So we'd have to schedule a special meeting. Yeah. I was just going to say, if you just scheduled a special meeting, maybe next week, um, you know, to, or if you have any comments you want to send to me or however you want to get your comments, uh, if you want commentary uh, made, um, you know, but but if you have on the special meeting next week, you know, to approve it, um, then we could get it finalized and issued for signature. Would we be able to get a copy of it after all the changes are made instead of trying to read it with all the edits in it just get a black line copy yeah once it's finalized uh those comments kind of blend in together the edits pdf is it is it is it is it always a pdf is it a writable pdf no no these this is an aia software uh document so it's um it, so it's it, not like you could put it in word or something no like no it's okay. it's got to be through the aia software I, I think the answer to that, Eileen, is probably no, that it had. I mean, if you had questions about anything, you could certainly share it with me and I can answer it or I can get the town's attorney to answer any questions that you may have about anything in here. Yeah. I, I, I suppose that I'll ask if we can, we can continue this discussion, but I'll ask for a motion to... Um, um to for the town for the uh, committee to review this uh these three documents uh with the uh, uh intent on approving it at a special meeting to be scheduled within one week i just want to note that next monday is president's day so um <laughs> i know a lot of people have that time i know kids are off um I think we want to rather than say within a week let's do it by the date that we can agree on meeting does that make sense i, I don't know if we all have to um if we can give our consent in advance of the meeting and just have a you know if we, even if we could i don't know if we even have to have a quorum or if or if you i do, can no you need a quorum and you need okay. to vote on it yeah okay. in a meeting but we would need it's a quorum. Our, we, we would I need think, all seven no. Hey Joe. Joe, yeah. this might be a this might be a ridiculous question, but is there any way that we can just vote online, like via email? Hmm. Asking the wrong guy. I don't know. I just I, I know Joe? like in, in, in the in in Joe like our Aaron? little league meetings, sometimes we vote via I know it's in a town, you know, um, event, but mm -hmm. um it's not normal process because it's a it, we're considered once again part of the government. Um, so even like the emails that go back and forth that we we don't try the the thought is not to get into a discussion on something, but like here's a change to the agenda. I'd want to see this is a change. Aaron, is there a precedent where we could do an email approval? Not to my knowledge. Not to I think my it knowledge. Needs to be at a public meeting. Yeah, because you need to have people be able to comment on it and you need to have people be able to see the vote and why this was the way it is. So. Right. <clears throat> and so I think, tom I think tomorrow holiday. night's out. I think we can say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, all your spouses will be not happy. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'll I'll be at hand for a gymnastics meet, so I don't know who picked <laughs> Valentine's Day, but I'll be I'll be at Pole Center hand if anybody wants to stop by. Uh, I'll be at house, Zoning Board of Appeals. That's even more exciting. <laughs> at our house, we call it Valentine's Day, and uh, so yeah, we do celebrate it. And I won't be available. 
<laughs> okay. Um, well, how, how about someone puts together a motion then? Is there other, I just want to see if there's a, I'm just going to say, how are we on the 15th or the 16th? So this week, so to speak. Yeah, what about Friday? I mean, can we do it during the day, like at noon on Friday and just have a five minute call? I can't do Friday. Okay. Or <laughs> four people do Friday. I can do Friday. I can do Friday. Two. <laughs> I can do Friday for a quick one. Three. I can do Friday after one o'clock. Okay, so after one. That yep, works. I can, do, I, can, I, can do, I can do Friday after two. Okay, oh. after two o'clock, check. I can still do that so far. Yep. <laughs> that's we that's that's we have enough at the moment. Eileen, how about you? I, I can't I can't do Friday at all. But you, you guys can Joe, do it without me. You don't need Joe. Me. I'll make a motion to do it at two o'clock on Friday. Okay, do what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or two fifteen? The rain dance. <laughs> how about two thirty? Two thirty. Perfect. Okay. Two thirty Friday. We're going to move okay. to have a special meeting at 2.30 on Friday via Zoom. I'll and move the, it. And the purpose of the meeting will be to discuss uh, and um, presumably approve the contract for signature and implementation. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right. Getting that in the calendar now. Who seconded that? Joe P. And um, Jeannie, I, I, I presume you, I'm sure you're still on somewhere. Uh, we do. We will need uh, a, a Zoom schedule scheduled for that uh, that time period. So you'll have to uh, you'll have to do that. Is that do you, is that do you have that? I can send you the zoom link i can't guarantee you someone else there may will have to host it if if you let me host it i can host it if, okay because i know you guys are off at noon so i can and that was friday at 2 30 right yes we went to 2 30. okay how long it's gonna be i would think five minutes hopefully right <laughs> if we've all if yeah, all course, the if everybody's had their questions answered. Yeah, there's there, there's two lengths to this meeting, Joe. Five minutes or three hours. Yeah. And I don't I don't think there's anything in between based on reading that uh, uh, the the uh, the contract. Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe we should do it in person at Cafe Allegra. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Friday at uh, two thirty. Oh, that's Brother Mike's. That's not Cafe Allegra. Oh, that's a... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, okay. And the again from this meeting, Tom, if you could uh, that you that you your your design recommendations and projections will be uh, first with. Um, Building, building and Rec and uh, Madison Youth and Family Services. Is that correct? That is correct. And then I mentioned um, wanting to have a kickoff meeting um, with the building committee uh, workshop. And the thought was, should I do so with the advisory group first and then meet with the building committee, uh, do it as a joint meeting um, or meet with the building committee and then get some feedback from the advisory committee? My my preference would be to do a joint meeting. Yeah. Any other? That would work. We can schedule that. Yeah, I see some thumbs up. Uh, I don't. I don't think we have to do. I don't think we have to vote on this. I mean, this is. This is. Uh, you you will schedule it, uh, Tom. Um, and um, one of the recommendations was that when uh, Madison Youth and Family Services and Building and Rec. Uh, start um, giving their preferences that essentially the committee, um, uh, I don't say hands off, but I think that the committee can monitor it, but 
you know, they this is their this is their going to be their home. They they get to uh, you know as long as they stay within the parameters that we we, we that we started with that they, that that um, that they get to design their space. Yes, no, it does. We don't. We don't have to. That's something we, we don't have to. Agree, we don't have. I don't think that's something we have to vote on or agree to. But I think the recommendation is: is this is their home? Let them um, let them uh, give us their preferences, and then see how it fits in. Eileen, you're looking skeptical. You're muted, so you're probably a good thing. You're probably saying something that we don't want to hear. You're still on mute. You still have your, I think she wants to stay on mute after what I say. Well, no, I think that, I, like um, I think th there may be opportunities for cost savings if we verify exactly what the needs are for each of the departments. Um, so I think, and we do have to answer to the fact that, so if, for instance, if Beach and Rec has three offices in three different buildings, I'm not sure the public's going to be the happiest about that, so to speak. So I, I, I think maybe some big issues we can we might want to get involved in, but you know, telling them where to put the closet, uh, you know, how the desks should be arranged, um, where you know where what who should get the window office. Uh, that's probably stuff we need to you know we have to leave to them. Yeah, I think back to Tom's original point that if we, um, you know, at that at that three month plus or minus period if, you know, there's significant overages and, you know, we're looking at ways to get this thing back onto budget. Uh, if we have to look at program for beach and rec and youth and family services, we can, we can look at that as an option. So there will be an opportunity to impact program if necessary. For instance, if we decided not to do anything in the lowest level, low, low, we, we took all development out of, you know, of fit and finish out of the, um, uh, the the uh, lower level, then you know that might impact what we do with uh, Madison Youth and Family Services or someone else. Um, one of the things that we never have done that we said we were going to do was visit other um, facilities, uh, visit other community community centers, and uh, I don't know if I know that I I would like to do that. Um, let's, I would like to familiarize myself with a couple, a couple of the ones in the local area, and um, if uh, I, I, I don't even, I don't believe we would have to worry about a quorum on that if we're if a, if it's a specific um, uh, thing, like a tour, uh, where there are no decisions, no motions, uh, whether whether there's three, four, five of us, it's not going to make, uh, you know, we're not going to run afoul of of the freedom of information. And um, I would I would like if we can, uh, as many interested members organize uh, one of these uh, visits as possible. And I'll 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 volunteer to do one. And um, anyone else like to like to give that a try? Eileen. Anyone else I didn't see? Yeah, Joe, Joe, I could do that. Um, do one. Um, I just was in New Canaan last weekend, so I'd recommend nobody go to New Canaan and look at theirs. Because it's <laughs> so awful or so nice? It, it's it's absolutely beautiful. So oh, wow. stay away from there. <laughs> so I guess you... one of the things would be, um, we had a list originally. Do we want to go back to that list and try to go there or are there specific ones tom that you would like to recommend us looking at um i can give a list of centers that i think are nice all over the state um but really i think it's availability um if you need contact information i can provide that as well so i can help out whoever's coordinating Tom, I hear that Mansfield is like top notch. Is that true? I know it's it's about what twenty years old, maybe now or eighteen years old, but I actually haven't seen Mansfields, um, so I can't 
tell you. I know a really new, relatively new one is Bloomfield. It's very nice. Um, and I could give you a list of the ones that I'm aware of. Um, what about ones you think would be relative or similar in scope and size to our project? Brantford, perhaps, or? Historical buildings, maybe. Yeah, Br Brantford's a renovation and addition, so that one is close, and it's all, it was, certainly that would be a good one. That would be on my list. Um, but what about Old Saybrook? Oh, sorry, I uh, have not Old Saybrook, so I I couldn't tell you. But why not? It's close. Durham. Uh, there was an announcement that Durham just opened a a community center. Is that that's another one's close. Um, Durham, I know that they have the corn school and they, they finally got control of it and they're going to renovate it. I don't know. I don't know how much work they did at in it. So, um, I don't know if they just opened the old school and started operating out of it or if they did a big renovation project. Hey, Michael, hey, Jim, I'll, check, I'll check. My coworker just got added to a committee. They're looking at building a community center in Westbrook. And they've been going around looking at some wet, uh, community centers in the area. So I'll check with him tomorrow at work and see where they've gone. I have two more things on, on the, uh, the agenda of the, or my notes under, under the um, forward planning. One is Tom. What what can we expect for meetings, and when would they start? With uh, and and between you and Mark, uh, <clears throat> I, I made a, a note here that um, we you know we're going to have to adjust our meeting schedule uh, in some way, and I was wondering the frequent the frequency, uh, and um, and and when they when they start. So that kind of depends upon the, the project and the pace of the project. Generally in the design phase, we tend to go a little more frequently. Um, once we get into the documentation phase, they can be back to once a month. Um, I, I think I would like to get started, meet with some of the committees, collect some of the information and you know, keep your schedule as it is. But then once we're ready to, to start moving and, and make some design decisions, um, we might want to meet every two weeks. Um, every week is uh, pretty aggressive. Um, and a lot of times we can't, you know, we can't turn information around that quickly. So, but I would, I would keep you up to date about that as the process goes. One of the things, Tom, that I mentioned to Joe, I, at least I think I mentioned to Joe, was the, the establishment of a working group. So the working group would have me, you, maybe Joe, or a member of the committee, and then obviously Scott and Austin um, from Beach and Rec and Youth and Family Services. And we would meet on a weekly, bi-weekly basis to start reviewing you know, the evolution of the program and the concept and the schematics. And then that working group, <clears throat> or, or, you know, us and, and, and whoever from the building committees on that working group would then share that information with this full building committee when we meet, what is it, twice a month, I think we meet? I was just looking at the schedule. Um, we, we currently meet twice a month. Right. So we're providing updates to this full committee twice a month, um, but it's really the working group versus this full building committee that's meeting weekly or biweekly. That makes sense. You may want to consider... Uh, the advisory committee, a representative as well. Yeah, uh, well, Al, correct me if I'm wrong, that advisor, Joe, that advisory committee is only for another month, right? Then they kind of disband. Is that true? I I don't believe so. I think Bill Stableford has been doing this for how many years? Oh, I, I know he's been doing it for a long time. I just wasn't yeah, sure. I thought I, I, thought I heard I, that, that they were only I'm there for like sure another month. Yeah, no, I heard that they were there for another month to collect the, their their information share it with this committee and then they were kind of like done right i i, I don't know that yeah no, um, I, th I think they're going to be in for the long haul correct me if i'm wrong alan they're going to be the ones helping out on the specifics <clears throat> for designs and the fixtures and things like that 
Yeah, I think you're, you're both right, Mark. I think their, their production begins to fall off uh, once they've done gathering information from both the public and from the potential user groups. But I think our intention was to keep them around, um, uh, especially in terms of further uh, information gathering that this committee might identify. And uh, perhaps in terms of uh, various public hearings or public meetings regarding the project, um, it's not clear to me whether the building committee should face the public or whether uh, our advisory committee should face the public. And I don't think we need to decide that tonight, but um, uh, the selectmen had no plans for immediately disbanding the design, the advisory committee at this point. In that case, then I would suggest Bill Stableford be on the working group, because you're right, he's been heavily involved with this. How are we going to go forward with 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 that? That uh, <clears throat> oh, and and one of the things that I I um, believe that we had discussed was that the the as as we get into these frequent meetings, they are hybrid meetings, uh, in person preferred, but hybrid when necessary. Which meetings, uh, Joe? The, the we, when we when we start doing biweekly, weekly, or biweekly weekly meetings. No, I guess that I, I have that wrong. Let me hold off. That committee meetings, when we do committee right. meetings, that that uh, and that uh, the committee meetings become hybrid, and the the meetings that you're talking about, the smaller yeah. group meetings, they're not noticed meetings, right? No. Nope. So they, but they would be generally be in person, uh, or in person or Zoom depends on on what the the topic is. There may be topics where they need to be in person. There may be other topics. Where they could be remote. Okay. Yeah, I think if people can save the travel time and we can get more people are productive, I would go with the uh, Zoom meeting unless you had to actually visit the site. Right. But the and I don't know if we if we we should probably discuss this. That also the, helps on the transparency level with the public. If it's recorded on Zoom, then people can watch it afterwards. But so. that's that's why that's why the the the. Uh, my my preference would be that the committee meet hybrid every time from what from what at, at some point when we get started on these um, on these discussions that we switch to a hybrid model because then it's recorded people don't have to travel but we do get uh, more personal interaction and uh, uh, better <clears throat> as and especially as the committee has expanded uh, to include Tom and Mark and some of and, and any of the other uh, representatives from those groups. Guys, I'm sorry, but I have to check out of the meeting. I had another meeting and I found out about this meeting late today. So I apologize. Um, but we're, we're winding. This, this is the last item on my list, Tom. So, uh, <clears throat> okay. There, there may be others. Other people may bring up other things, but for the moment, I'm, I'm down to the end at the, of, my, uh, of my list. I just wanted to bring up a couple of things, Joe, that for, for people or for the committee members to, to consider. There, there's still uh, other things that um, we're going to have to consider. Uh, the first is whether or not we want this to be a construction manager delivered project or a general contracting delivered project. Uh, that's one. And the next consultant that you're going to need to bring on board sooner than later is a commissioning agent, um, which, which has a vital role uh, in this, this process. So again, I don't think it's a topic to be discussed tonight, um, but I think we should cover this uh, at our next meeting on the 28th. I had I had not, I don't believe I've heard commissioning agent before. No, yeah, it's in our budget. budget. It's uh, and I can describe what that what that is. Okay, that'll um, be for, the for next meeting. meeting. Yeah, it's essentially making sure the mechanical electrical plumbing systems, the envelope systems are uh, designed and constructed and installed and tested for the town's requirements. Um, typically, when there's public funds in place, uh, it's required statutorily. Hey, Mark, who puts the commissioning plan together? The commissioning agent. 
All right, perfect. Just wanted to check on oh, that. Yeah. Any other issues for this discussion or for uh, our next uh, future discussion in our next meeting? Can I check with my parliamentarians? Is there any other motions that we need to make? Or uh, before we to, to, to wrap up what we've just done? We just need to ask if there's any liaison comments and any other um, public comments. That would be the last two thing on, I think on the agenda, right? Those are the last two on the last two items on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any um, uh, any any committee comments? Get those first. Liaison comments. Thank you, everyone. I do have a question. Are we ever going to get a liaison from the board of finance, or are they not going to happen? Who knows? Okay. <laughs> As a thought. Um. Now, um, Jeannie, uh, if you could. Uh, poll any of the uh, public. It's still if there's anyone from the public still on. If there are any public comment, they are not raising their hand at this time. Okay. Um, so our next does everyone have the date of our next meeting so we can put this in in the agenda. Yeah, it's February, I believe I've got February 28th. Um, and one of the reasons I wanted to do that, so I thought it was, I will be on vacation at, on that, uh, on February 28th. I will be in Florida and uh, soaking up some rays and um, visiting my daughter and seeing James Taylor at the, um, uh, nice. at the Broward Center in, um, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Fort Lauderdale. So okay, all, so have a drink on us. <laughs> You sure you don't want to miss James Taylor for this? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we have, tickets, we have tickets to see him again in, in Tanglewood. You know, we, we got the ones with the, in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale first. But anyway, David, uh, can you um, chair the next meeting, please? Yeah, absolutely. That's Tuesday the 28th, correct? Right. And yes. I may be okay. able to, to, to join, uh, depending on how much uh, sun and, and beer I've Son I've had and beer I've had, but uh, we will. Um, I, so I may be able to join, but I don't want to be in a position to have to chair it because we're going to be down there for a few days first uh, before we before we uh, will be down there on the twenty third, I think, my second. So um, gotcha. Okay, uh, motion to a uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Seconds. Okay. Second. I think that was Eileen. Uh, you could you could mark as the second. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for the um, thanks for all the thanks support everyone. so far. This is good meeting. Thank you all. Take care. Good meeting. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.